بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين In the book entitled Arwa Thalatha This is a Diobandi book It's written in story number 440 Diwan Muhammad Yaseen, who was a servant of Hazrat Nanatwi, was famous for his loud dhikr, and it was not possible that somebody heard his dhikr and did not cry. He was doing dhikr with a very painful voice and he was crying a lot. He said himself, so he himself now is narrating a story. He said himself that once he was sitting under the northern dome of the Masjid of Chatha and was busy in loud dhikr when Hazrat Nanatwi also sat outside the Masjid in the northern side and started a muraqaba. A muraqaba is a Sufi meditation and his tawajjuh, i.e. his attention was towards my heart. So Nanatwi, he started this Sufi meditation which is not from the Sunnah and his attention was at the heart of this khadim, at the heart of this servant. At this moment, the man narrates, he says at this moment, I entered in a state and I saw whilst doing dhikr that a throne was descending from the sky and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is sitting on it. So he claims that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is sitting on a throne that is descending from the sky. And the Messenger of Allah is sitting on it with the four khulafa also present in the four corners. Okay, so he claims that he saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam sitting on a throne which was descending from the sky. And at each of the corners of this throne, there was one of the four khulafa al rashidin Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhum ajma'een. So there's a throne which is descending from the sky. The Prophet alayhi salam is sitting on this throne and the four khulafa, they are on each corner of this throne. And they left the throne and came in the masjid. So all of them, they left in the throne and came in the masjid and they were very close to me. And the messenger alayhi salam, he asked one of the four khulafa, O oh brother, call Mawlana Muhammad Qasim. So he left and he came with Mawlana. Then the Prophet alayhi salam said, Mawlana, give me the hisab, i.e. the accounts or the results of the madrasa. So according to this narration, which is in the books of the Diobandis, they claim that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam descended and he came and he wanted to see the accounts or the results of the Diobandi Madrasa. And then uh, he was told it is present and then he started to tell the Hisab, he, he began to tell the results and the accounts of the Diobandi Madrasa and he gave all of the details of the Hisab. Then, the story continues that the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam became extremely happy and then he said, Right, Mawlana, now give me permission to leave. Hazrat said, As you wish. Then the throne raised in the sky until it disappeared. And Ashraf Ali Tanwi, another one of the famous Diobandi elders, he said, This was a kind of kashf and it was possible that the Tawajjuh, i.e. the attention of the Mawlana played a role in it, which is a kind of tasarruf, a kind of Sufi control. So brothers and sisters, what we see in this book, with the, uh, which is a Diobandi book, and it contains their Diobandi narrations and their Diobandi stories, we find that they claim that, number one, this man, he was doing this type of Sufi uh, meditation and making dhikr out loud, very loud. And he was crying, going overboard in this dhikr. And then suddenly he sees a throne descending from the sky. And when he sees this throne, there is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the four khulafa, and they are descending from the sky until they enter into the masjid and they begin to ask about the accounts of the madrasa. SubhanAllah. Subhanallah, we see pure stories, pure falsehood. Our religion is not a religion of stories. Rather, our religion 
is Allah says in the Quran, the Prophet has said in the authentic Sunnah and the companions, they have understood and they have implemented it in this way or that way. So our, our religion is not based upon mere fairy tales like we find now. And subhanAllah, we're going to see at the end of this video, we're going to present the scans from their books so that nobody can come and say, uh, Oh brother Abu Ibrahim, you are making these things up. Brothers and sisters, our religion is not based upon mere stories, mere narrations. Our religion is based upon evidences. We take our religion on evidences and we don't go overboard in this type of meditation. We don't make up lies that we see the Messenger of Allah. Perhaps this man was possessed and yet they take him as somebody who's very, uh, very pious and they write about it and perhaps they will sit there and say, SubhanAllah, you know, look at the people of Dioband and how blessed they are, etc. Rather, no. This is an innovated school. This is an innovated way. This is an innovated methodology. We need to come back to the Quran and to the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, going forward from here, bi idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala, I'm going to be bringing you in each video one of these uh, stories so we can see the shirk, we can see the innovation, we can see the falsehood in the works of the founders of this Diobandi school. And we can always uh, go back to their works. If somebody says, I'm a Diobandi, we'll say, okay, you're a Diobandi. Brother, we don't hate you. Rather, we want you to come back to the Quran and the Sunnah. Rather, we want you to come back to the way of the righteous Salaf, those righteous predecessors. Did you know that in your books it says X, Y and Z? And subhanAllah, we find that in their efforts to conceal what they are truly upon, sometimes they remove these things from their English translations because they know that the English speaking brothers and sisters, they are not as gullible as those people from the Asian subcontinent. So they remove these things. But Alhamdulillah, we have them in Urdu and if you read Urdu you can understand them and you can get them verified. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the truth has come and falsehood has perished. And this is the nature of falsehood. It doesn't matter how much you try and hold it up, eventually it's going to perish. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us back to the Quran and the authentic sunnah and away from these silly stories like this one where they claim that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam descended to look at their accounts and to look at their books and look at their progress etc. This is pure falsehood. This is against the way of the companions. وَآخِرُ da'wana And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.